Hello wonderful person, this is Anton and in today's video we're going to go on a hypothetical exploration and take a look at what it would be like to orbit or I guess live around an orbit of Saturn. We're going to place Earth right here in the orbit of Saturn and we're going to talk about the science and also I guess the visuals of what it's like. Welcome to What The Math. So first of all, where exactly is Earth located right now? It's actually inside the ring of Saturn. I made it so that it's actually kind of half in and half out. And I did this on purpose because I wanted to show you the visuals of what it would be like to orbit around this beautiful planet. But today we're also going to briefly talk about the dangers and I guess the science of why this is maybe not such a good idea after all. First of all, let's start with why is it that the Earth is actually a planet and not a ring? Many of you may know something called Roche, Roche limit, uh, which is the distance from uh, an object where because of the gravitational attraction of the bigger object, the smaller object might actually fall apart and turn into a ring. In other words, shouldn't Earth also kind of turn into shredded pieces of rock? And the answer is no. And that's because uh, Earth has really, really high density compared to Saturn. Saturn's density is only about 0.7 uh, grams per centimeter cube. It's actually less than water. So technically, it is a gas giant. It's, it's actually less dense than water. Whereas Earth, on the other hand, is uh, on average about 5.3 uh, to 5.4 grams per centimeter cube, making it a lot denser. And because of this density, the Roche limit for Earth is actually way, way closer. It's actually right here on the edge of the inner ring. So if it was here, it would fall apart, but here we're totally fine. There's another interesting phenomenon here, and that's of course the tidal effects from Saturn. Assuming Earth is not tidally locked to Saturn, in other words, assuming that Earth is kind of orbiting regularly with 24 hours um, of uh, basically rotation per day, uh, we would experience a tremendously large tidal effects. Uh, we would experience tidal effects that would just most likely turn Earth into a volcanic world, a volcanic moon similar to Io, but way, way, way more extreme. At the same time, let's actually change the uh, view here a little bit. Uh, at the same time, uh, this planet right here, or uh, technically this is a moon now, uh, would also have not just volcanoes, tremendous earthquakes, tremendous, tremendous uh, tidal waves, huge tsunamis pretty much on like daily or hourly basis. And that of course means that this would not be a very easy to live on planet. But in this case, the planet is tidally locked. If you can see, uh, like for example, Australia never actually sees Saturn. Africa always sees Saturn. So in this case, um, the planet would actually be kind of stretched. It would be egg-shaped because of the tidal uh, attraction, but it would not experience tidal effects. It would not actually have volcanoes. It would most likely turn into ice world. So in this case, it's actually not an ice world because of the way that I set it up right now, but it would probably turn into something similar to Enceladus or Europa. Uh, it would just be an ice-like surface with some rocky formations on the surface as well. So it would be a very different world. Um, the other dangers of orbiting Saturn are radiation. Saturn produces a tremendous amount of radiation. As a matter of fact, we would receive way, way more radiation from Saturn than we would from, uh, from the Sun. The Sun is actually right there somewhere. Let's look at it. It's really far away. It's about nine astronomical units away from us. That's about nine times more than the original distance of Earth. And this implies that we will receive about 80 times less heat and radiation from the sun. Most of our radiation would be coming from Saturn, and but it would not be the kind of radiation you want. And because of this, uh, the surface of the planet would be constantly irradiated, at least the one that's facing Saturn. This part might be okay though. Uh, at the same time, oh, I just realized that this is not a perfect tidal lock. It looks like Africa is actually facing away from the planet now. And yeah, there might be a little bit of a deviation from a standard tidal locked. Um, oh, and by the way, there will be a lot of uh, solar eclipses as well, or I guess Saturn eclipses in this case. You would most likely be seeing these um, essentially once per orbit. 
and uh, sometimes you would even have these from other moons that are passing in front of the uh, the sun. There was actually a large moon passing by nearby us just a second ago. I think it was somewhere here. So you would actually be experiencing a lot of tidal effects from other moons. And uh, there would definitely be uh, a lot more uh, eclipses from those moons as well. But really, it's Titan that would create the most attraction to Earth. And Titan is relatively far away, so the actual tidal effects would not be too great. But they would still be quite visible. Anyway, so um, this is kind of the physics of what it's like to orbit around Saturn. And uh, one thing I actually didn't really mention yet is the uh, radiation formed by, by the magnetosphere of Saturn. Because Saturn has tremendously powerful magnetosphere, way more powerful than Earth, it also has very, very powerful Van Allen uh, radiation belts. These are basically the concentrated parts of the belt where radiation is extremely powerful and can actually damage human life quite easily. We would be passing through those belts twice per orbit. That's, that's pretty dangerous. That means that Earth would not really be very easy to live on. We would need to find a way to protect ourselves from this. Uh, Earth's magnetosphere might actually get locked to Saturn's magnetosphere. Uh, and so for this reason, all of the radiation from Saturn will go directly into Earth. In other words, it will not really protect us from Saturn at all. But it will protect us from the Sun. But since Sun is so far away, it's not really a concern anymore. Now let's actually land on the surface. We're going to go to, I guess, let's start with Africa right here. And we're going to stand in the desert of Africa. Or I guess in this grass field of Africa. And then kind of take a look at the skies above us. Realizing that we are inside what seems to be Saturn's... Uh, belt, basically Saturn's rings, and right above us, pretty much right above us at 90 degrees, if you raise your head really uh, high up, you'll see Saturn. Now we're going to actually observe our first Saturn set, which is kind of like sunset, but with Saturn, and we'll also see the sunset as well. These two will be kind of one after another, so I'm going to accelerate time here just a little bit, and you'll see how all of this looks like from the surface here. So here's the sunset, and the night skies appear right above us. And just like that, if we actually turn around here, you'll also see the Saturn set, an absolutely beautiful event that you don't really get to see very often, or at all. It's only Space Engine allows you to imagine these things. So here is a tremendously beautiful, very unusual event of Saturn setting in the night skies. Now we're going to also see Saturn rise in a few minutes, or I guess a few seconds, as it kind of circles around, or as we circle around Saturn. And interestingly, you can see the Sun actually rose from the same location where Saturn set. So if we were an early civilization trying to understand space right now, we would be so confused. Why is it that as soon as Saturn set, the Sun rose, and then sometimes it actually doesn't happen that way? So the pattern itself is actually not uh, that predictable. And also there's a lot of other moons you can see orbiting around. Oh, here comes Saturn. Uh, a lot of other moons in the skies of Earth that will be moving ridiculously fast. So for any early civilization, human civilization or otherwise, living on a such, a such planet would actually be relatively confusing, at least to explain all of this stuff. Here comes the Saturn and look at that sun is coming down. We just passed through the rings as well. You kind of saw the uh, the, the sort of the rocks of the rings passing through us. Now, the reason why this is actually important to imagine is because it's very likely, let's do this as a fish eye lens, it's very likely that um, there are a lot of exoplanets that actually have these conditions. They might be orbiting around what would be gas giants in habitable zones where you could have an Earth-like planet in, in its orbit, uh, or in orbit around the actual gas giant. Um, and so studying the effects that these gas giants might have on these planets would be extremely important. Uh, this is actually something that we need to study in a lot more detail because we're more likely to find moons of gas giants to be habitable than we are to find uh, actual planets because gas giants are really easy to find in, in the skies and then we can actually take a look at the data from the gas giant and see the moons that it might have. So finding exoplanets that are habitable around these gas giants is kind of important. Well, anyway, so what I want to do now is let's actually maybe 
escape into the Earth's upper atmosphere and try to follow Saturn as it progresses through the, our skies as well. We're going to fly through its uh, ring right here and look at that. So anyway, let's move out and observe this from the outside. So that's kind of all I wanted to mention in this video. And if you actually want to find out how I made this happen, how I turned Space Engine into, into such a cool exploratory tool, the video for this was actually uh, posted it uh, on this channel. And I explained how to turn Space Engine into this very interesting and very unusual exploration tool of space science. Anyway, I'll see you guys tomorrow. Do come back tomorrow uh, to learn something else and subscribe if you still haven't. Let's escape the system and look at all of this from a little bit farther away and see what our Earth looks like as it orbits around this beautiful gas giant. Thank you so much for watching. Consider supporting this channel on Patreon and space out. And as always, bye bye.